an unnatural labyrinth has begun a campaign in swallowing up innocent people whom are under Moon Knight's protection. Yet the number one question stands, how does one kill a labyrinth? Thus will Moon Knight emerge victorious from this fight? Or will his body and mind become broken even more so than usual? Jed McKay continues to knock it out of the park with his time on Moon Knight. It's clear that the creative team has a direct path on where they're taking the character, and I'm all for it. McKay crafts a dark, disturbing, and deeply enjoyable story in this issue. There are some great character moments for Mark, and I love seeing the twists and the turns with its narrative, as well as the thematic chances that it takes. Now obviously it was a major blow to Moon Knight's operation back when Zodiac destroyed the Moon Knight mission, but it was also disappointing for fans, including myself, who had quickly grown to love the concept. Therefore, what does writer Jim McKay do? <laughs> well, the man goes and delivers one of the most original and probably the most captivating new headquarter stories that I've ever read in comics, and it's perfectly in keeping with Moon Knight's surreal supernatural world. The only fault I will give this issue is the fact that the book is stemming from the idea that you, the reader, have read The Devil's Reign Moon Knight one-shot tie-in. The only problem is the fact that that book's not out yet. That's not to say that, you know, because it's not out yet, that you won't understand what's going on, but it's things like that that really damper the comic. It's mistakes that are just so clearly out of the writer's hands or their control that really piss me off when it comes to comics and just huge Marvel events in general, because the mandates, they affect all the books to take a hit while the event is given all the glory and praise. But that's it when it comes to negatives, a negative that has nothing to do with the majestic creative team. Artist Sandro Capacchio continued to bless the book with the stunning pencils while colorist Rochelle Rosenberg brings them to haunting life and breaks up the shadows with gorgeous swathes of blue, green, red, and gold. It's amazing how much Sandro Capacchio has evolved within the book, and on the character in particular. He seamlessly blends things like literal monsters into street-level grit, and it looks so great and so real. I love the dark, nightmarish imagery a lot and how the character beautifully blends into that darkness. Mark has been through the ringer thanks to Zodiac, but he is coming out of the other side, better and stronger because of it, but most of all he's even angrier. To which is why the book is so thrilling, as the issue makes the reader feel like you're a part of the story. Thus, it makes it feel as if McKay is pulling you right into the trenches besides Mark and Capacchio's art assures you that you're not going anywhere else in this exciting issue. Moon Knight issue number 9 gets a splendid 8 out of 10. Our story picks up with Moon Knight falling from a window of a 6 story apartment building, landing painfully on top of a dumpster with the empty alleyway, thus swearing to come back with a way to kill an unknown shadowy enemy who is watching our hero leave from the broken window. Now this is when we get our flashback scene with some context as to what's happening, where we get some narration from Moon Knight, stating that this all started out like any other mission, with people going missing. Now obviously after escaping from the high-tech Murberton prison, which will be covered more specifically within the Devil's Reign Moonshot one-shot, which is coming out this Wednesday, along with exhausting all of his leads to find Zodiac, Moon Knight has welcomed the return back to normalcy. Therefore, he was glad to take up the case. Now seemingly according to his research, all three people who had gone missing were last seen in the same place, the sixth floor of an old apartment building. Yet what's weird is the fact that there's nothing weird about the building itself, at least when it comes to horror tropes. Like, you know, there's been no murders, no cults, nor any dimensional rifts located within. The only thing that is pretty weird is that according to the blueprints of the building, there should be only five floors. And so Moon Knight ventures in, and as he wanders through the corridors from time to time, he comes to see the shadows of the people who have gone missing. Yet no matter how hard he tries, he could never catch up to them. Therefore, Moon Knight theorizes that perhaps the sixth floor has the ability to touch the minds of the missing people and thus made them a part of it, which is likely why Moon Knight was able to escape. Because when he was weak, exhausted, and just stretched out to the limits of his mental and physical endurance, that's when the sixth floor tried to touch his mind. But that was a painful mistake because Moon Knight's mind is pretty fucked up. And so, the sixth floor screamed in agony, thus allowing Moon Knight to escape via the window. Now, Mark is recounting his escape to his therapist, Dr. Sternum, saying that after four days of being trapped within the building, the sixth floor eventually vomited him out like poison food, or that of Taco Bell, because, let's face it, 
Taco Bell isn't real food. It's cat shit. <laughs> it's quite possibly cat shit, but it's still tasty nonetheless. Eventually, Sternum admits to thinking that she thought something was wrong when it came to Mark missing sessions, but Mark apologizes if in any way he had caused her any problems with the Avengers, since that was the agreement following the Age of Conchu, Mark needing to see a therapist. Now what's interesting is that Dr. Sternum reveals that she didn't report his missing sessions to the Avengers, which comes as a surprise to Mark, because Reese, who can't stop gushing about talking to a real superhero, notified him that Black Panther had gotten in touch with her as he was asking about Mark's disappearance. Therefore, Moon Knight assumed that Dr. Sturdum had reported him. So two things. This basically suggests that the Avengers are more aware of Mark's whereabouts than they let on. Plus, it's also a reminder that Zodiac, from what we saw in the end of issue number seven, basically is holding the therapist hostage as a means of swaying Mark mentally, yet to what specific purpose, we've yet to know. And so Dr. Sturdum asks the question, whether or not Mark generally trusts Reese and Tigra, or even Soldier for that matter, considering the fact that, you know, he's ex-Hydra. But Muna assures her that he trusts them all, because much like him, they've all done bad things or have had bad things done to them. And that's why he opened the Midnight Mission to begin with, to protect people and to protect folks on what they might become. And this picks us up at the Sanctum Centaurum, with Wong opening the door to Mr. Knight, who immediately asks for a favor, because Wong still owes him for when Moon Knight joined the Las Vegas Devil Killing Death Squad, aka the Midnight Suns. But Wong reminds him that afterwards, Moon Knight assaulted Strange and stole his powers for a minute. And my my, how the tables have turned. Yet despite being awesome and putting Moon Knight in his place, Wong inquires about his visit. And our hero lets him know that he's seeking insight on the Aristic real estate. Later on, we pick up with Moon Knight in front of the apartment building, equipped with a duffel bag, which apparently is his holdup for his promise of killing the entity. Now Reese being the ever-loving cynic wonders on what if he doesn't come back, to which Moon Knight jokingly replies, but he's also, you know, pretty serious, that, you know, in case of my failure, then you're gonna have to find a new job. But in the end, Reese, don't worry, because I always come back. And so upon taking the elevator to the sixth floor, Moon Knight greets the entity. He's saying that he knows that the thing doesn't like him, which for Moon Knight's life seems to be par for the course. Moon Knight then lets the 6th floor know that he knows what it is, the House of Shadows, a living structure from beyond space and time, which is what Wong told him, and that the house has had a run with Doctor Strange in the past, and that every single time Strange or the Midnight Suns banished it, it wouldn't necessarily stop it fully, as it always found a way to come back. And so Moon Knight lets it know that the last time he was here, he promised that he would kill it. However, he isn't a sorcerer or, a sk or skilled in the arts of magic. And so instead, he brought enough explosives within his duffel bag to level the place entirely. But this is when Moon Knight finally understands the entity, as he makes the comparison that both he and it are both the same, because they keep coming back, whether or not anyone wants them to. We're basically the same because we're badasses like that. And so essentially, Moon Knight originally thought that the thing was a maze, but rather it's a house, and houses want to be lived in. Therefore, Moon Knight lets the house know that he understands what it's like to be hated, to feel unwanted, and to not be able to fit in. So he makes the house an offer, let the missing people go and come with me. Because Moon Knight assures it that although both he and it keep coming back, they both need a purpose. And so he offers it the same thing that keeps him going, a mission. And this is what picks us up later on with Moon Knight, Reese, and Soldier, standing in front of the ruins of the old Midnight Mission. Now everyone is pretty much confused as to why they're here just waiting about for like no apparent reason. But eventually a dense fog takes the area. And alas, Moon Knight asks his friends to welcome to the team the House of Shadows, which will now be acting as the new headquarters of the Midnight Mission. And now with a permanent space to operate out of, Moon Knight lets them know that they are back in business, baby. However, the trio are unaware that they are being stalked by a Ravencroft escapee, more specifically the infamous Hydra mass murdering agent known as Rufford Winner. And as he makes his way towards the Midnight Mission, we see that Ruford holds a dead eye gaze set straight for Moon Knight with a pistol drawn at the ready. And that, folks, was the end of Moon Knight issue number nine. And thank you guys for checking out this video, as it truly means the world to me. And as always, I am your majestic sayer over at Supercliff. And if you guys are new to the channel, then do me a solid by smashing that like and subscribe button. And also hit the notification bell so that you'll never miss out on an upload.
and so you'll always be kept up to date with your favorite top tier comics happening in the comic book world. Now tell me, what are your thoughts and opinions on this issue? Are you guys excited for issue number 10? Let me know down in the comment section below. And until the next video, peace.